Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw aboard MSC Eurebia on the actually christening cruise of this ship. It's actually the first net zero cruise, too, so it's a lot of first here. I'm here with Ruben Rodriguez, who's the president, North America, for MSC Cruises USA. And we're going to talk to Ruben a little bit about uh, this ship and what's going on with the company today uh, and a whole lot more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Ruben, first of all, it's great to see you again on another, yet another christening. It's yes, it's fantastic to see you, James. And we seem to do this frequently, don't we? Well, you guys are doing it. I didn't make the last one, but I've done, done my share of MSC uh, christenings in my time over the last 10 years. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if I keep seeing Sophia Loren all the time, and I, I believe she's going to be here, too, for this yes. one, right? Yes, she's the godmother of MSC Eurybia. She'll be with us tomorrow. That's fantastic. I remember seeing her, you know, a long time ago, and I've, I, every time it's great to see her. Now, let's talk about um, what impact will this ship this is the last of the uh, Meraviglia class ships that you have is the fifth one what impact will this ship have on MSC and your ability to cruise many more destinations so it, it, it has a meaningful impact uh, I would say on two fronts at a global level it's our latest and best step forward in terms of our investments in sustainability. You learned a lot about that, I know, this morning. Know. We had an interview with your sustainability head, and it was amazing how much, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that, about how much emphasis you're putting on sustainability. That's right, whether it's, you know, MSC Ocean Key Marine Reserve in the Caribbean, or our ships like Eurybia, our focus on sustainability is, is very significant and very important to, to all of us. It's in our DNA at MSC. So at a global level, it's our best step, best and latest foot forward. And it's, it's very appropriate for a ship that will be sailing in the North Sea, in the glaciers, and it's, you know, it's a very fragile part of the world. So it's appropriate that we really, really minimize our impact in, 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 on the planet um, and, and make the planet better. Right, so that's at the global level. Uh, I know many of, of uh, your our advisors watching, our, our U.S. advisors. For us in the MSC Cruises USA team, Eurybia is very important because it's really opened up Northern Europe as a popular deployment yeah, for America, which is my Americans don't know don't as much. They got the med down, but maybe exactly. not Northern. And you know what we're finding is that as we're growing, and we're growing very rapidly, James. We had 2.7 times the level of bookings in the first quarter of 2023 or what we had in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we're growing a lot and people think of our growth as being so much about our US ships and sure, of course, the ships, the fabulous ships we've deployed in Miami and Canaveral in New York are a big part of it, but we're also growing a lot around the world with more Americans selling, sailing with MSC around the world. It used to be mainly the Med, but now we're finding that these beautiful, innovative, sustainable new ships are also very much attracting American guests that are experienced cruisers and want to try these new ships with MSC in other parts. So, for example, this past winter, the Emirates, for the first time, was a very popular destination. Know, and, you, with you, 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 and you christened the ship in Qatar, right? That's right. Yeah. So, World Europa turned out to be the first time that we really had a meaningful penetration into the Emirates with Americans. Same with Eurybia. With Eurybia, we're seeing as many as 20% of the guests on board coming from the U.S., which is remarkable growth in Northern Europe for us. So uh, it has a global implications and it has American implications, so we're excited about it. No, and it's great. So now we can cruise Northern Europe. And I looked, you had a map of all the different places that MSC has cruised. It's pretty much globally now, right? It's very global. It's very, very rich deployment, whether it's really unparalleled deployment in the Med East, West, so many embarkation ports, Northern Europe, several ships, both doing the pearls, right, the beautiful cities of the Baltic, as well as the glaciers in the North Sea, uh, and 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 uh, the British Isles as well. Uh, you know we're a market leader in the Southern Hemisphere, both South America and South Africa, and of course we're growing very rapidly in the Caribbean and uh, and in North America, and and now we launched Japan, which we're very excited I know, about. I just I heard that. You, you are in Japan, and it's going to be really, as you're spread across the Pacific, it's going to be great. Now, I couldn't let you go with telling me, like, everybody's asking me, what is Eurybia? What's, where's that name from? Eurybia is one of the goddesses of the seas, and it's a goddess that, that really uh, harnessed the power of the winds and the waves to be the master of the seas. And that is, as you know, the ocean is in our DNA. It's our, in our DNA in, in the brand, in the company, in the Aponte family, the ownership. And being the masters of the seas and protecting the seas is our, 
our great mission, and therefore uh, it seemed like a fitting name for no, our does, leadership. Uh, absolutely. Now that I know what it is, I, I totally agree with you. Now, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about how, because you've just launched as well, you mentioned in Qatar, your first of your new world class, which is World Europa. How does this ship, because uh, which is the fifth in the series, differ uh, from World Europa? I know World Europa is, is a bit bigger, right? It is bigger. It's a, it's a beautiful ship. Uh, and, and we're very familiar with this question in the U.S. because we're fortunate that we have, we'll soon have all three ships in the, U, in the U.S. ports. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you know, MSC Eurybia is a continuation of the Meraviglia class, and MSC Meraviglia sails from New York. And, and we think of MSC Meraviglia, which is a very popular ship. Our guests love Meraviglia. We see this class of ships as the ship for all seasons because it has both wonderful outdoor experiences, but many indoor experiences, whether it's the sportsplex or the the beautiful Galleria with the dome or, um, you know, our racing simulators or our indoor pool that has a retractable yeah. roof. Um, so we've deployed this, this class of ships in New York because we're year-round in New York and, of course, you have to cover for all seasons. Mm -hmm. That's very different from the Seaside class and what we call the Seaside Evo class, such as Seashore and Seascape, which are ships that have a lot of outdoor space, right. uh, don't have as many indoor facilities like the sportsplex but have far more outdoor space many of the restaurants have both indoor and outdoor dining um, there are multiple outdoor pools there are multiple outdoor amenities um, and it's really a ship for warm weather so we sail of course that class of ships from miami into the caribbean um, and we also use those ships in south america now in many ways europa is the best of both worlds That's the world the first of the world class and you have world class america coming i think it's next year right exactly in april of 2025 so a little more than a year from now um, we'll have world america sailing from miami and and that is the best of both worlds it has remarkable outdoor spaces. The Y-shaped aft creates a beautiful open aft with an outdoor galleria and both staterooms that face into that galleria and that face the ocean. But it also has a very large indoor galleria with an LED dome similar to what you see here mm -hmm. and a wide variety of indoor and outdoor spaces. In fact, on World America, we'll have our first MSC Harbor, which is a great deck for families with both water park dry play, food and beverage, food trucks, sheltered areas where guests can relax and enjoy being outside with their family but still have shade. So uh, a great combination of, in, in a way, the Seaside class and the Meraviglia class. So what you're going to do is sail Meraviglia out of New York, I know. Uh, that's, that's a big plan there. And then World, World America comes in. That's going to be from Miami? World America will be from Miami. We'll also have uh, Seascape sailing from Miami, and you'll see us continue to grow. I'm sure you'll see more ships. We already have planned seashore this summer, I'm sorry, this winter sailing from Port Canaveral, uh, so another seaside class ship. So, And you'll see more growth. We'll announce more more ports soon, and, and you'll see us utilize the ships according to the best their best use, their best deployment. So all the new ship categories, seaside, uh, uh, Meraviglia class and now world class. So I, I got that straight. I think I, I, I like that. I, I got it. Now let, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what would you say to travel advisors who are going to be selling this ship? What are the really major features of this ship that you like actually that you think are different? Obviously you mentioned the itinerary, but what, what else do you think? We love this ship. And again, it's it's uh, an it's extension of Meraviglia. It has um, many of the Meraviglia features, such as the beautiful Galleria, but it has some unique features. For example, uh, the Atelier de Voyage and Le Grille is a new venue for us. I saw it's that. A it's a beautiful French-inspired bar and French bistro, but it's not like any other bistro. It's a bistro that also has a strong focus on beef and steak and char grilled steaks. Uh, so it's a very unique, very European approach to steaks, very French. So that's an exciting new space. I'm certainly excited about it. I'm also very excited about Helios Wine Bar. I Which I got to I got to try it last night. It was amazing. It's very different kind of sort of give me an education in wine in a digital way. Right? In a digital interactive way, educating you about. I think it's all about a hundred varieties of wine. Uh, and yeah, I, I didn't try all a hundred yet. We'll have to go back yeah. for a second time. Right? Yeah, you, you don't look like you had a hundred wines <laughs> last night. You look like you slept well. Um, but uh, it it has digital boards that educate you on the origin of the grapes, of the terroir, of the different styles of wines, the best food pairings, and we have bites that go with each wine, so it's, it's a lot of fun. No, and uh, so then you had one thing that we experienced last night, Carousel, which is a big band venue at the stern of the ship, which is really an amazing performance of, of, of big band music, but also, you know, show tunes, everything, and a huge band, huge orchestra. 
And you know what's exciting is that it's another example of making things better. We've had carousel lounges on Meraviglia, on Seaside, on, on Seashore, but this one is unique because it, at first it had those incredible windows, right? The incredible glass, so you have this beautiful aft view. Uh, so you can use it at night for entertainment, but during the day to have a cocktail, to watch, see the beautiful views, to enjoy that big band. And then it has an outdoor terrace space as well, so that it's- yeah, We didn't go out there last night. We are just listening to the band, but they were amazing yeah. and they do a great performance. I understand they have different music every night. That's right, that's right. It's very exciting. It's a big band. Yeah, so that's a few of the features that you can get on this ship. Now, it's my final question to you. Uh, what, what progress have you made in terms of brand awareness in the United States and uh, North America? Because, uh, I mean, I've been following MSC for 15 years or whatever, and you, you still had that challenge, and we were talking about it earlier. It's not like other brands don't have challenges. People can't remember what cruise they were on. Uh, but MSC in particular, given how big and how big a profile it has and how important it, it is in leading the way in certain things like sustainability, that uh, you, you need a bigger profile and uh, most people have to say, oh, I know what MSC Cruises is. And so how, how much have you got that brand awareness going? We've seen significant increase. You know, we shifted our strategy. Uh, uh, when I joined, we, we shifted to a strategy of meaningful marketing investment across different media, not just TV and radio, but also digital. And actually, ironically, instead of the broad approach we had historically, advertising nationwide, we really focused on the key markets where we source most of our US guests. Mm -hmm. uh, we focused on Florida, Georgia, we quickly added New York, yeah, the Northeast. That, I have seen, I've seen a lot of MSC stuff in the in the Northeast, absolutely. And you will see us add more more DMAs, but by focusing and by increasing our dollars significantly, we're spending over 3X what we did in 2019, and ensuring it's very effective and monitoring the impact. So we literally have brand surveys every through two to three months, and we monitor awareness. We've seen dramatic increases. To give you an example, of course, the Miami DMA knows cruising well. So before we started this process, Miami was already our highest aided awareness it was about 18% of the respondents were aware of MSC when when suggested several brands. It's now over 40 percent in New York. That's where, amazing. That's yeah, where New York, where it used to be eight percent, it's now over 20 percent. So we keep growing, and every quarter we see these investments are paying off in higher awareness. Also in Georgia, in other DMAs in Florida, in Orlando, the Orlando DMA, Central Florida, it's now our largest U.S. source market. That's amazing. That's great. And now you've launched this new series of things tied to your sustainability campaign. And so it's the first campaign I've ever seen that focuses on sustainability. And I guess you don't have the numbers quite back yet, but apparently they're they're looking pretty good. They are, you know, and it's it's important to not only build awareness, but to build consideration, right? You want guests to be aware of you and to consider you for their vacation, and you want the right guests to consider you, right? The guests that will come on board and really enjoy MSC. So we're really focusing on that target audience, and we're working with our advisors to specifically focus on consumers that are curious travelers, that love international destinations, that are drawn to our European heritage, that are drawn to our very global deployment, mm -hmm. and also consumers that care about, about sustainability, right. because we are deeply committed to that. So by you know, by pursuing this relatively unconventional and bold approach of a, of a TV commercial that, that talks about our sustainability focus, we wanted to attract that audience that cares about it, and, and we're seeing it. Not only is our awareness growing, but our, our connectivity with those consumers that care about sustainability is improving, which improves our consideration. That's great, and it's good to see that that's happening. Both your 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 awareness, the brand awareness, and also this sustainability awareness, because you are leading the way. I think in that regard, uh, Ruben, I want to thank you for taking the time. It's great to be on board here on MSC Euribia with you. We're going to have the christening, I think, tomorrow yes. uh, with Sophia Loren, yes. um, and I'm looking forward to that. And I guess uh, we'll have to talk again, if not before then, but next April for uh, uh, World America. Right. We look forward to that. We look forward to welcoming. MSC World America and having, having you there. And thank you to your audience for joining us. It's great to see everybody. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>